everyone, and welcome to a very special, special, special staff showdown here at Privateer Press because myself and Oz are going to be playing Warcaster for all of you for the very first time. Mm -hmm. um, if you've never watched us before, we do stream every week on both Facebook and Twitch. Every Wednesday at 10 a.m., we do the dev chat with Oz and I talking about what's going on with the games we make, yeah. War Machine, we're, Riot Quest, Mompoc. We're doing Mompoc tomorrow. We're doing Mompoc tomorrow because yep. I know we, the Primecast kind of yeah. took over things yeah. last time. Yeah. Get your paint on with Jordan Lamb every Thursday where Jordan paints the miniatures that we make and answers hobby questions from all of you. And then we have two semi-regular shows, Staff Showdown, like you're watching now, where we play games and do sort of like live battle reports. And then Hobby Hangout with Danny Samuels and Brian McLaughlin where they build terrain, do conversions, and teach you how to, you know, build your miniatures. Uh, if you are watching on Twitch, we do take subscriptions. If you subscribe, you do get a special subscriber badge and special emojis. The more subscribers we get, the more emojis we unlock. So if you're watching us for the first time, please feel free to subscribe over on Twitch. You'll get no ad viewing, and you can use your Amazon Prime yeah, sub. Just like Morse127 just did, use the Amazon Prime and has done that for three months now. Awesome, thank you. Super easy, just push that button. Just press it doesn't the button. cost you anything extra at all. So I know we all want to see Warcaster, so I'm gonna go through the announcements real quick, and I just wanna to talk to everybody about the current mini crates, and we will get through this and then get into the mm -hmm. gameplay. The current War Machine Mini Crate model is the Gremlin Spring Break Party, available till March 19th, and we have a new VIP model, Double O Debray, mm -hmm. available if you sign up for a six-month sub. This is the craziest, craziest mainline Mini Crate we've ever made. It's up there. Yeah. I mean... We made a sexy Gremlin. Correct. <laughs> uh, over on the Legend of the Five Rings, Bayushi Kyo is available right mm -hmm. now. Uh, fantastic looking model, great RPG model, and just if you like Oh, Legend of the Five Rings, another fantastic addition to your collection. Uh, Tinku Sensei is still available as the VIP model uh, for quite some time, if I'm not mistaken, until uh, May. May. So you've got a little bit of time yeah. left. Over on the Savage Mini Crate, Valyria is available until March 12th. Mm -hmm. And if you do a six month sub over there, you will get the VIP model, which has changed from Conan on the Throne to yep. Red Sonia. Yep. This month is all badass ladies. Yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Let's, let's get into it, shall we? So, a <laughs> couple things. First off, we're going to play a full game of Warcaster using the starter contents of the Iron Star Alliance, which I'll be repping, versus the Marcher Worlds, which mm -hmm. Oz will be repping. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to explain things as we play so that you can learn some of the game mechanics. So we're not yeah. just going to play and not say what we're doing because that's a bad way to show off a new game. Yeah. Something to note real fast, um, because I know everyone will be seeing the rules later. Uh, even when we play War Machine, Riot Quest, and Mompok on the stream, we sometimes make mistakes. There's a so, thing called dev brain, yeah. which means every single version of the game that's ever existed in any playtest format is still inside my head. Correct. <laughs> so if we make a mistake that doesn't line up to the final rules that you see later, please don't destroy us in the comments later. Yeah. Uh, human error is a thing. Also, the rules are basically done, but we're at that stage where like- There's small tweaks still happening. You can make tweaks in like the proofing process before like everything is 100%, mm -hmm. like we can't touch it anymore. Yeah. Uh, so if you, a stat we mentioned on a card ends up just being a little bit different when you yeah. see the final versions again. So what you're seeing is basically everything yeah. to the game, but heads up, small changes might occur, or yeah. we might say the wrong thing, but we're gonna do our very, very best to not goof up and say yeah. or do anything wrong. Uh, somebody in the chat is asking about a 4x4 board. There are two sizes of Warcaster board. Yes. A full 4x4, 48 by 48 and a 30x30, 30 30, and those two sizes determine the size of the army you can bring. Yeah. So we're playing it inside of this 4x4 in a smaller area as a skirmish game, but we just like this big cool board with all the back scenery stuff. Let, let's actually talk about that for a second. Yeah. So when you build your army, um, everything in the game is a unit. A unit mm -hmm. is either a squad, which is typically three soldiers, a solo, which is a single soldier, also called warriors in the game as uh -huh. a game term, yeah. or a warjack. That's the three types of units. Um, whenever you play, the starter boxes each come with four units. You get a warjack, two solos, and one squad. Mm -hmm. A standard skirmish game, which you would play on a 30 by 30, which is what we're playing today, would be up to eight units. Yep. A normal 4x4 four four size game, this would be your much larger games, would be up to 15 units. Yeah. So when you and your opponent play, determine your board size, as we mentioned, mm -hmm. and then how many units you're, you're taking. Uh, units do not have a point cost to put into your army. Yeah. They have a point cost to summon in games. This is mon -poc It's very much like mon -poc. It, You can have as much stuff on your sideboard as you want, but you have to pay to put it on the table. Correct. 
So when you, it's not like you're building a 50-point army, for example. You're just taking X number of units. So mm -hmm. the things you do before the game begins is determine how many units you're playing, determine your scenario, because every game of Warcaster is scenario-driven. There is no just kill. You, you yeah. always play a scenario, yeah. and you always win off victory points at the end. You then build your force, build your units. Anything in your force that is customizable, like Warjacks, you customize ahead of time. So Warjacks in particular are mm -hmm. customizable. Mm -hmm. They'll have a Cortex option. Every Warjack has a Cortex you have to implant in it that gives it some different abilities based on the chassis. And then they have hard points, arms, shoulders typically. Every Jack chassis has so many hard point points it can use. It's got build points. It's got build yeah. points. And then every weapon or sh and shoulder mount has a point value to it. So say the Jacks we're using today, they each have five build points. So one of our guns might cost two build points. The shoulder gun might cost three build points. If you yeah. did that, say you did a right arm that had two build points and a shoulder one that was three, your left fist would just be a hand. Yeah, just be a hand. You wouldn't have anything in it. So you have to customize those yeah. before you put them in your army so your opponent knows exactly what you have in reserves. So you, you determine your table size, you determine your unit max, you determine your scenario, you build your force, and mm -hmm. then the last thing you do is you build the rack. Yeah. The rack is your deck of cipher cards. These are effectively the spells of the game yep. that you get to customize. There are deck building rules uh, that tell you what spells you might draw throughout the game that you get to use, and then you shuffle these up. Yeah. It's always 15 cards. Yeah, the starters come with 24 cards, and you play with a 15-card deck, so there's already customization in the starter for the rack. Yes. So let's go over the scenario we're playing today, and as we are, I'm going to explain one of the, the core mechanics of playing uh, a mm -hmm. scenario in Warcaster. So if we look at the table real fast, uh, we are playing Recon. Recon is one of the skirmish scenarios when you're playing on a 30 by 30. Mm -hmm. It's a great starter scenario for when you first get started. This is about the level of terrain you probably want on your board. If you have stuff that gives you verticality, like we do, yeah. by all means you should use it, but don't feel you have to. Use whatever you want, build the table however you want. Yeah, this, the, the Thousand Worlds, have ice planets and desert planets and, and jungle planets and volcano planets, airless moons and all those kind of things. So yeah, you can make whatever kind of sci-fi scenery you want for this game. Yeah. We're playing on what looks like an old abandoned arc station on some mm -hmm. moon somewhere. Yeah. So here we have like an arc geyser and a big crane that's pulling it up. Dropping bombs in there. Yeah, yeah. Dropping, dropping little bombs to make the geyser shoot up. But uh, what we've got is three objectives in this scenario. There's one here, there's one here, here and there's one over here and the map dictates where you put these three yeah so each map will dictate how you can secure objectives in this game there's two different types of objectives there's ones that are permanent mm -hmm. and there's like portable these. and portable ones some scenarios will have you grab an objective and run it somewhere and do things with it but these are all permanent it'll tell you which kind of units can score it sometimes it's just squads sometimes it's just solo sometimes yeah. it's a combination in this one any unit can score it mm -hmm. Usually, you only score at the end of a pulse round, which I'll explain what that is in one moment. But in this scenario, it simply says, if a unit ends its activation securing an objective, you score it. You have to be within an inch, and there can be no enemy models within an inch. If there's any enemy models within an inch, you do not score it. Mm -hmm. The pulse round is a core aspect of Warcaster. So there is a tracker called the pulse tracker, and it's got different little spaces on it. Yep, one through five. This scenario uses one through three. Whenever the first player takes a turn, you move the tracker forward. It tells you, in this scenario, we're going to go to three, and after we go to three, the pulse round ends and we go back to one. In a lot of scenarios, when the pulse round ends, often at five, it says that's when scoring happens. Mm -hmm. So we would each take five turns back and forth, and then the pulse round will occur, and then we would check scoring conditions, and the next round would start. Also, at the end of a pulse round is usually when effects aspire and things like that. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. so, but in this one, in this scenario in particular, we're able to score on our turn without it being the end of the pulse round. Each objective can be scored by a player once per pulse round. Mm -hmm. During the first round, each one is worth one. During the second round, each one is worth two. And during the third round, each one is worth three. So again, Oz and I can score each of these once per round. This is going to be a three-round game. And the value goes up. Yep. So what it means is very early on, we're going to grab a couple points. But then we have to entrench ourselves and yeah. try and hold it for yeah. later on. Yeah, we have to fight. Toward the end of the game, we'll have to fight more because our models will be mostly deployed because we're playing with very, very small forces. Yeah. And we'll have to figure out exactly how to score things without also giving them up to your opponent. So let's, let's go ahead and just get started. We'll yeah. play and we'll explain what we go. So the first thing we got to do is the roll-off. Mm -hmm. We're going to roll a d6. Yeah. 
I got a six. Good job. Oz, you got a, don't, don't do it to me, three. three. So I'll go first. Three. So you're a first player. So the first thing you do is you're going to deploy up to five summon points, five points yep. worth of models on the board. Mm -hmm. So with the deployment zones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy So while Hungerford's doing that, Tony, we haven't showed off our armies yet, have we? So let's show off our armies real fast while Hungerford's doing that. So Hungerford's playing the Iron Star Alliance. So he's got a Paladin Weaver, which is his like space wizard. It's going to be what cast his Fury Ciphers, which are attack spells. Yep. Um, he's also got a Paladin Enforcer Squad, so that's the three guys on the right side of the screen. And a Paladin Commander, which is the Sword Shield guy on the left side. And then that big robot in the middle is the Warjack, and that's a Firebrand. He's got a Reflex Cortex, which you don't pay build points for Cortexes. Yeah, you there's have multiple, to install them. There's multiple Cortexes per chassis, and you just put one on. Yeah. And then he's got a Fusion Glaive, which is a sword, a Repulsal Shield, which is the arm, and a Harbinger Cannon, which is a machine gun thing on his, on his shoulder there. Because okay. he's got three hard points, and he's filled out that model with five build points. Yep. Uh, let's go ahead and take a quick look. And there's a question from Tam Wolf I want to hit from chat in a sure, second. Sure. But let's go ahead and look at your forces real fast. Yeah. So I'm playing the Marcher Worlds. So where the Alliance is the organized civilization, that's, that's spread throughout the core worlds and controls a lot of the things about economies and stuff and is very powerful. The Marcher worlds are a loose coalition of, of like the fringe planets mm -hmm. and places that are harder to get to, places that are a little less civilized. So the Marcher worlds are a little bit more ragtag looking than, than the, the Iron Star Alliance. So I've got a weaver on my team too, a coalition weaver. I've got a ranger fire team. I've got a hunter, which is the sniper on the right side of the camera. And then I've got a Dusk Wolf, which has a Scout Cortex, a Railgun Shoulder, a Battle Rifle on its right arm, and a Ripper, which is that Chainsaw Blade on its left arm. Yep. All right. So to go to Tam Wolf's question, he, was a little, he, he had a little question about the pulse round. So explain again. Every scenario tells you how many turns you, each player gets before the pulse round starts again. Mm -hmm. So this scenario says we get three. So what that means is when I take my first turn, we're going to put a tracker on one. Then Oz will take his turn. Then when it comes back to me, I'll move it to two. Then Oz will take his turn. It comes back to me, I'll take my third one. Then it goes to Oz. Then this scenario says we only take three turns. So it goes back to one Yeah. when I take my next one. That is a pulse round is from the time it starts until the time it comes back around. And many scenarios will indicate when the pulse round ends, that's when you score or that's when this effect occurs. It's a way to, to manage the timing of the game because it's an alternating activation. This scenario in particular, what the pulse round does for us is it says during the first pulse round, each objective is worth one point. During the second, it's worth two. Yeah. And during the third and final, it's worth three. Also, every game only la lasts, X n lasts X number of pulse yeah. rounds. It's never play indefinitely. It's yeah. play three pulse rounds, play five pulse rounds, depending on the scenario. So yeah. there's always a clear cut end of when your game is going to, to stop. A turn, we're going to go through in a second, Chewie's asking, what is a turn? Yeah. And a turn is what's about to happen, and yeah. I will walk you through the entire. So I'm going to deploy first. Oh, I deploy first. Are, I mean, I'm going to deploy for, before you take your turn. I'm yep. at. So, so what I did deploy. is I, I put my my squad of paladin enforcers in unit coherency mm -hmm. over here because I'm going to go for yep. this objective, and I put my uh, weaver uh, over here, my solo. What do I want to put out? <laughs> I think I. I the, think what no time to think, Doctor yeah. Jones. I'm going to I'm going to put my I'm going to put my dust wolf. Oh, over here. You're coming in heavy, huh? Why not? And then um, just to get a little bit more variety on the table, because you have a weaver and a squad, I'm going to put um, my hunter solo. Oh, and just my, right for the throat. I'm just, I'm, I'm going to show different things that I, you I show. know, I know, I'm just messing yeah, with you. So then before... And the, I am going to murder you, so don't worry. Then we draw five cards. Mm -hmm. So your hand of cipher cards is always five, and these will be available to us. I'm going to take a quick look at what I drew. I'm gonna play with mine face up because uh, I don't really I don't really care about beating you in specific. Ooh, I didn't shuffle that well. So there's four <laughs> kinds of ciphers, and um, and they're color coded. So if you see our our cards around, like I've got these orangish cards and these blue cards. So uh, harmonics affect anything. Mm -hmm. They affect whatever they say. So those are your like global cards. Yes. Then you've got overdrives, which are the blue cards. Yes. Those affect jacks. war jacks. Yeah. Then you've got geometrics, which are the orange cards, and those affect squads. Yes. And then you've got furies, which are the red cards, and those are attack spells, like fireballs yeah. and 
ice bolts and that kind of stuff. When you play a card, you can play it on anything on the board that it can target, except for the Furies. The Furies have ranges, and they have to come out of your Weavers. Yeah. That is more destructive power that gets channeled through a Weaver. So a buff, I can put on any of my guys, no matter where they're at. But to yep. shoot a Fireball out of my Weaver, it has to be in range. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and start the first turn of the game. Yeah. So first thing I do is I'm going to move the Pulse Tracker to one, because mm -hmm. I am starting a turn, and I am yep. the first player. So I'm in charge of the Pulse Tracker. Yeah. We have seven arc. Every caster has seven arc. These are tokens. They stay on you, the war caster. This is your personal power, and it, this is a pool. I'm gonna, the camera's kind of hiding them a little bit. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna move them. Yeah, and that's in the game terms, that's called your well. Arc that's not in play is your well. Yeah. And so, just for clarity, uh, the, the starters will come with a bunch of tokens, and we are using some of those tokens today. Yes. But cutting out a million tiny little pieces of paper and gluing them in the cardboard was very time-consuming and stuff. So we're just going to use some existing things like beads and stuff for this game. But when you get a starter, it'll have a bunch of arc and activation tokens and all that kind of stuff in it, just like that pulse tracker you showed is the actual art for the pulse tracker. Yep. So the, you, each player always has seven arc. That doesn't change. Mm -hmm. Arc starts in your well. Arc in the Warcaster's Well is the power you yourself are retaining, and it will make your Furies stronger when you decide to do destructive spells. So the first thing you do at the start of a turn is, first you check to see, do all of your models have activation tokens? If everything has an activation token, you clear it all off. So that's a, a very quick thing you do. Yeah. Uh, if it doesn't, then you leave them as they are. Then you can either return any number of Arc from your models in play off back to your well, or you can move one arc from your well onto any model you control in play. Arc on a well, or on a model, does two things. It makes their attacks better, and almost every model in the game has a charge ability and a spike ability. A charge ability says, if this model has arc on it, its charge ability is active and it does whatever it is. Maybe yeah. you gain Pathfinder, maybe you can suddenly fly, maybe you can shoot further, whatever it yeah. is. A spike ability says, when it's this model's activation, or when a certain trigger is met, you can spike that arc off the model back to your well and gain usually a very powerful ability. Yeah, like uh, the spike ability on, whoop, wrong side of the table. The spike ability on my ranger fire team is they can move three inches. Okay. So it basically kind of lets them run. And you'll see how that works later in the game. So I'm gonna put an arc on my weaver. Okay, yeah, you can allocate one arc at the beginning of the round. Yep. Of, of your turn. Yep. So you do that. So the next phase is you can play a Cypher card, one. You then do your activation. You can then play another Cypher card. So that's the middle chunk of your turn. So first mm -hmm. is clear your activation tokens if you need to, yep. move one arc, then we get to the action. So what you get to do every turn is you get to activate one unit and then a bonus solo. So you can go yeah. Jack solo, solo solo, or squad solo. Yeah. The, the biggest thing to get in your brain if you have played other games that use unit to mean squad is that unit is everything is a thing a cohesive thing a warjack a squad a solo whatever so when you activate a unit and a solo it's anything you want and then a solo correct so the middle phase is always play one cypher if you want to do the activations you want to then play it one more cypher yeah. so i'm going to for and it has to be in that order so, Oz, I'm not going to play a Cypher card to begin, mm -hmm. and I'm going to move to my activation. Yep. I'm going to do this unit. So they are speed six. When you move a squad, you move one model in the squad up to their speed. Any model you want. Any model you want. Then you pick up the rest of the squad and then put them in coherency with them. So you can kind of leapfrog. So let, yeah. me, let me show you this. Yeah. Let me do the top-down view. Mm -hmm. This guy is the one I'm going to move. I'm going to go two inches this way. I'm going to go four inches this way on the platform. Then I yep. pick these guys up and I simply put them in coherency with him. Yep. Like that. They're done. Uh, can I shoot anything? I don't think I've got range to shoot anybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what your range is. They're range 12. Uh, there's full pre-measure in this game. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, not, you're not close enough. We are not close enough. Uh, I have, in this scenario, if you end next to an objective and you're not contested, you get to score it. Yep. So I can only score this one once per pulse round. So I will secure that objective and I will okay. score one VP. One like, point. Like I said, in this scenario, it, it, the, the early scores come really quick. Yeah. Then this Weaver really likes having... What's he going to do, Weaver? He's probably going to come over here and drop a gate on top of this building, but yeah. 
I put an arc on him, and what his charge ability is, is he can channel fury spells up to 12 inches away. Yeah. When he's charged, he adds plus five range to fury spells. So I have a 17 mm -hmm. inch range. Yep. So I'm gonna actually move him. When you activate, you have two things you get to do, move and attack. You may do them in any order you want to. Mm -hmm. You can attack, then move, move, then attack. You, do not, you cannot move, move, you cannot attack, attack. Yeah, and cipher cards are not part of a model's activation. You play one from your hand before you activate models, and you play one after you activate models. So my weaver's gonna move here. Uh-oh. So my activation portion is done. Now it comes to, do I wanna play a cipher card afterwards? What, what fury are you gonna throw at me? Uh, I am going to play... The first attack of the game, maybe. Null Collider? Ooh. If I'm in range. Well... Is that 17 inches? It's not! No, no. It's the it's worst. I'm throwing it at the jack. Barely out. I hate it. So, I'm gonna play Null Collider. It says target an enemy model in range. I'm range 17. Mm -hmm. So, uh, my, my Weaver says when I attack, I'm gonna roll four white dice. Uh -huh. So let's go through an attack step real quick. Okay. We're gonna do it before we add any, any other dice. Here's how attacking works. You have a mat, you have a rat, or in the case of spells, you have a focus stat that says how many white dice you roll. It's right by Andy's foot. Here, thanks. Try to, try to keep the dice. I'll do my best. In so play. you have an attack stat. <laughs> you roll that dice. Then you look at your number of strikes, your opponent then rolls white dice equal to their defense. Mm -hmm. If you beat their roll, you hit them. Mm -hmm. You then look at the pow of the weapon, you roll that many white dice, and you roll red dice, which have higher statistics of hitting, for how mm -hmm. much you beat them by. Yep. Everyone has an armor. For every multiple you beat their armor by, you do a point of damage. So for example, let me explain that one more time. Let's say I'm mat four and you're defense three, mm -hmm. and I have a pow four weapon, and your armor three. Mm -hmm. I roll four white dice, I get three hits. You roll your defense a three, you get one hit. Mm -hmm. I beat him by two. Therefore, I now roll my pow, say my pow was four, yeah. I would roll four white dice, and I beat him by two, so I would add two red dice to the roll. Yeah. Then I compare the strikes I roll to your armor. For every multiple of three I rolled, because that would be your armor, mm -hmm. I'd do a point of damage. Yeah. So, so accuracy is a bonus to damage, basically. The better you hit someone, the harder you hit them too. My focus stat for my weaver says I'm rolling four white dice, and then every arc that's on something adds a red die. Whenever someone shoots a gun, if they have arc on them, it adds a red die to hit, not to damage. Yep. Whenever you cast spells, the arc that's in the well on your caster adds red die. Yeah. So I'm adding six red die to this deck. What's the defense mm -hmm. on your jack? Three. Do you have cover? Uh, I think I do. I I'm, think I'm behind that thing. Yep. So when you have cover, you add two red dice yep. to your defense roll. So, so let, me gonna... see, let me see how many hits I get. Yeah. So I rolled two, four, six, nine. Okay. So I'm going to borrow one of your red or two of your red dice. Okay. And I'm going to roll my my defense and see if I get a nine. Get a four. I got a four. All right. So I I, I canceled four of four mine. of those hits. You still have five. So I beat you by five. Uh huh. So the pow of this spell is three. Its secondary effect is if you had an arc on the person I hit, it shunts it back off off of them yeah. back to your well, but you yep. have no arc on you. So my pow on it is three, which is indicated on the card itself. I beat you by five, Yep. so I'm rolling five red dice, and uh, what is your armor? It's three. So every multiple of three Oh wait, I sorry, it's four. My Dusk Wolf is armor four. Every multiple of four I roll is a point of damage, and how much health does your jack have? Three. Three, all right. So Oz, your jack takes one point of damage. Okay, because what'd you roll, a five? I rolled a five. Okay, so the Dusk Wolf got, got hit. Now, there's no damage affecting quality of models in this game. Mm. So if you're a War Machine player, you know that Warjacks have systems and stuff like that. This Warjack just has three hit points. When it suffers all three hit points, it's dead. It, you can't blow its arms off and that kind of stuff. Yep. I put an activation token next to the units I decided to activate. Mm -hmm. I've played my Cypher card. I'm done. Yep. So now we move to the end phase. So again, beginning phase is clear off activation tokens. If everyone on your side has one, allocate one arc or mm -hmm. remove any number of arc from people on the board back to your caster. Yep. Then you go Cypher, activation, Cypher. Yeah. Then the end is summoning and putting down gates. Yeah. Now, you summon first if you have a gate in play already with arc on it, mm -hmm. which on the first turn you won't. Then afterwards you put a gate down. You can put a gate down 
anywhere within five inches of any warrior models, anything that's not that a jack. Didn't, that didn't get some in this turn. That didn't get some in this turn, which yeah. this is deployment, they didn't. Yeah. So I am gonna put, you gonna and put it's it on top of that building. It's within, not completely within. I'm gonna put my gate yep. here. When you put a gate down, you may put any number of arc onto it. This is the arc you will spend to summon. Yep. If Oz damages my arc, it will shunt or damages my gate. Yeah. It will push arc off of it back to my, my caster, screwing up my summoning. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put four on it. Ooh. You're so gonna armor that gate up a little bit. There's four arc on it. Now you summon, then you place gate. So on your first turn, you don't get to summon anything yeah. effectively. Then is the cleanup phase. You may discard one Cypher card from your hand if you want to. You drop to five mm -hmm. and it moves on to the next player's turn. I'm not gonna discard anything. I'm gonna draw back up to five. And Oz, your turn starts. Okay. So first thing I'm gonna do, I, I, I'm not readying things because I don't have any activation token. Yep. So I'm gonna put one arc on my hunter. My hunter's charge ability is stealth. And stealth in this game is you can't be attacked from more than eight inches away. So, so when, when the hunter's powered up, mm. there's some sort of cloaking field that goes into effect. My paladin enforcers have a spike ability that allows them to ignore stealth. Of course they just do. Just so that you know that. Of course they do. Uh, do you have a cipher card you uh, wish to play? So I thought you were going to hit me with... Uh, the cryo bolt that puts an activation token on it. I didn't draw it. Because I have the overdrive that removes an activation token from Warjack. I didn't, so I didn't I was, draw it. I, I was prepared for that, not on purpose. Ha ha. Um, but I drew a hand of geometrics. You can't outthink me if I'm not thinking. And geometrics are squad targeting cards. And you don't have any squads. And then I have two blue cards, which are the overdrives. Um, but this overdrive is a melee one, and this is a remove an activation token. So you don't and I'm going to play with full knowledge, but that's not the way the game is really played. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking through all my options and yeah. how the game functions. So you guys understand. So yeah, I have a hand of five cards, but none of them are appropriate right now for anything that's going on. Yep. Okay. So straight to your activation phase. Yep. So um, the hunter's speed is seven. So the hunter can easily pop up there, run up here. And that's going to also score me that point. So Oz is going to end up scoring one point at the end of this hunter's yeah. go because he'll be securing that objective. But before the hunter does that, they're going to take a shot with their rifle at Eesh. your at your paladins or at your weaver. Your weaver's just standing out there in the middle. Of, if I if I ended up over here, mm -hmm. now line of sight in this game is done by volume to volume. Mm -hmm. So you are. You are, you are covered by this staircase. I, am, I can't see you. Correct. Because I want to be up here, so I want to score this, but that staircase is in the way. So you measure range base to base, but you measure line of sight by volume. By volume. So you definitely see these guys. I can. So I'm going to take a shot at those guys. Okay. My rifle's range is 15, so this sniper rifle shoots really far, so yep. I can easily shoot those guys. So what is your the rat? The rat on the hunter is a six. Oh. So six white dice. And then you have an arc on him. And so I have you, an arc, so you I roll an extra red. You roll red. My defense is three. Your defense is three. Oh, I rolled a die on the floor. I'll get it. I'm the worst. And I'm not going to yank my microphone out. Good job. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to re-roll one of these whites. Okay, it's a hit. So okay. I got a five on you. Now, do I have cover from where I'm standing? At the you, you do, because yes. you're higher than me. Yep. And volume to volume, a line from your volume goes through that thing. So yep. you have two red dice on your... Cover is basically, are you within an inch of something that the volume line would cross yeah. between? Yeah. So therefore, if you have the high ground, you basically always have cover. Mm -hmm. So would you get Oz a five? I got a five. All right, so I, my defense is normally three, mm -hmm. three whites, but I'm rolling two reds because the cover bonus is you add two reds to your defense roll. Oz, I rolled a six, I mean, I rolled a five, but because you didn't beat me, uh, that means you miss. Yeah, that's, that's an even. So you have to get over the person's defense to hit them. Okay. Um, this hunter also has an ability, a base ability, but it's not a charge or a spike. Oh. Called fire and displace. Immediately after resolving a range attack, mm -hmm. the model can move up to three inches, but that, I don't want to move too want... far away from this thing, so I'm not going to move at all. Makes sense. I'm just going to stand near that. So I will score that point now, okay. which Tony's already, I think, given me, right? He's given it to you now. Oh, he's given it to me now. Okay. So that was my, it was my solo activation. Yep. So now I'm going to activate my Warjack. And my Warjack doesn't have any arc on it because I can only allocate one arc. Um, there are uh, cipher cards and stuff that let you play around with that. And so as you're activating them, as again, when you put the arc, you can put one arc on solos, one arc on units that either charges their ability, gives them access to their spike abilities, or it adds one red die to their attacks. 
jacks can accumulate up to three arc, making them mm -hmm. particularly potent. My jack in particular has an ability that says its melee range goes up by one for yep. every arc on it. So I can get yep. plus three melee range as it has a force projector on its fusion glaive. Yeah, and the Dust Wolf has an Arcantric Turban that for every arc it has, it gets plus one speed. Okay. So it can go from speed five to speed eight if it's fully charged. Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna start shooting at you. Oh. The other thing about Warjacks that makes them great is that warrior models have to pick an attack. One attack. Unless they have a special rule like the charge on your paladin. But typically, if a guy had, a warrior had three guns, you only fire one. Yeah, but Warjacks can use all their weapons. Yes. And there's no being engaged in melee in this game. Correct. So you can chainsaw someone and shoot someone, shoot someone else and do all that kind you of stuff. You can shoot into melee, you can shoot out yeah. of melee. There is, there's no free strikes, there's no mm -hmm. engagement. Move so, so I have uh, a rat of four. What are you shooting? Who are you I'm shooting? I'm going to shoot your weaver. He's standing out in the open. Are you going to shoot him with the battle rifle or the I'm rail gun? Start with the battle rifle. All right. So, I'm just going to take a shot at you with the battle rifle. Good luck. I'm defense three. I rolled a one. Ooh, I can beat a one. I don't know if you can. Oh, I can beat a oh, one. Oh, you rolled a two. Okay. So then I am going to sniper my rail gun. That used to be called the sniper in playtest. So I'm going to say that all the time. You're going to fire a rail I'm gun at this dude. I'm going to fire a rail gun at your weaver. Dodge. Why not? Just get out of the way. Okay, so I'm still right four. No, yep. no arc on me. And I rolled a two that time. Whew, I got this. These dice, not, these I, dice are not going. My, uh, ooh, you beat I me by you. one. Okay. So what's so, the pal? The pal on the rail gun is five. So I roll five white dice and a red because I beat you. I'm armor three. You're armor three. And I have two damage. Yeah, you have two hit points. Yeah. Two hit points. So I could, if I had arc, I could spike. Because each of the weapons in the Warjack will have its own rules, and when you build a Warjack, you're basically picking what weapons and what special rules you want. Yep. So I could spike to reduce your armor by one if I had arc, but I don't, so I can't do that. All right, so I'm armor three, so every multiple of three does the damage. So if you roll a six, I'm If dead. I roll a six, you die. Yeah, this, I, don't, I don't want that. This railgun shot goes straight through your face. No thanks. One, two, three, four, five, <sighs> six. Exactly six. The worst. No weaver for you. So my weaver dies, the arc that was on him goes back to the well, yep. and he goes back to my reserves. I'll be able to summon him later. Mm -hmm. But that was unfortunate. Okay, so I did that. So put activation token on your, your I'm guys. I'm putting activation tokens out. So there's one there, and there's one there. So now would be the, the back end of your activation phase, which is do you want to play another cipher card? So this cipher card that removes an activation token is interesting, except, like you said earlier, the ready step at the beginning of the turn, if all of your things have activation tokens, you just clear them all. Yeah. So if I play this right now, it's gonna mess up my activation, so I'm not gonna do that. Correct. Except I am gonna summon something, so I might as well do that. Oh wait, I won't summon something this turn. Okay, so now I'm gonna put out a gate, and my gates are over here. So gates can be placed by warrior models, so the warjack can't, unless the warjack had some sort of special rule. Mm -hmm. So that gate is gonna be up here, and we're going to put three arc on it because you're you're not going to shoot my gate off the table, right? Uh, I'm going to try. I don't want to put four on it. I want to put three on it. All right, is that you, Oz? That uh, I'm going to discard. I'm going to discard this overdrive and hope to draw a cooler card. Now, if I would have played two and discarded, I would fill my hand back up to five. And if you ever have a bonus to your hand size, yeah. that happens immediately and you always fill your hand up to that bonus. Um, so I drew a harmonic, which is one of those, is one of those cards that can't affect anything. Yeah. So I have a purple card now. Cool. I don't have any fury still. So we've kind of walked you through yeah. one full turn here, right? That's the basics. Yep. So this would be turn two. Turn two. Because I'm starting my turn and I'm yep. the first player. So we're just gonna start now going through and playing the game. Yeah and looking at the chat while so, it's not our turn. First thing that happens is, all of my models in play have activation tokens, because I've only got this one squad and they do, so I remove all activation tokens, meaning they're eligible to be activated again. Normally, when you're playing a larger game, you can't yeah. pick something that has an activation token on it, you can only activate yeah. things that don't have activation tokens. Yeah, in, in this battle box game, you're gonna be clearing tokens a lot more often than in a full game with 15 units on a four x four table. Uh, arc phase, I will move one arc onto this squad. Uh-oh. Cypher phase, uh, nothing from my first cypher. Okay. Then activation phase, I can only go with them. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move, so I can't score this again just yet. Yep, because you can only get, score it once every pulse round. I do want to get in range to hit some things. So I'm going to move this guy here, move him here, and move him here. It looks then, like Faye is in the chat maybe answering questions too. 
I saw someone say, thanks, Faye. I haven't seen Faye post anything. Us? Yes? What are you doing? I'm going to shoot your gate with my that My gate? Guy. Okay, my gate has defense three. So my enforcers are rat three, but I have a red on them. Do you so think my gate gets cover there on those stairs? It doesn't look like it does. I don't think it does. It looks no. like it's close, but it doesn't. Uh, I rolled a four for the first shot of three. Okay. I rolled a two. Okay. Then the pal on their gun, their assault rifles, is a four. I beat mm -hmm. you by one, right? Uh, you rolled a four, you said. Oh, yeah. I beat you, you by, beat two. by two. What is the armor on your gate? Gates are always five. Five. One, two, three, four. That's no damage. So when you do damage to a gate, you just shunt arc off of it. Yeah, you're knocking power off of it. And if a gate is ever empty of arc, it collapses. Correct. Uh, second guy will shoot. I rolled a four again. I rolled a zero that time. I will beat you That's by bad news. four. That's bad news. You still can't roll a five. I will roll one, oh. two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. So, so you did one. I do one, which shunts one arc off, which messes yep. with your summoning next turn. It does. My third guy. I only put enough on there to summon all the stuff I have off the table. So, Well, we're going to mess with that. I don't uh, know. My third guy third is also going to shoot his assault rifle. It's your last shot. I got a three. You got a three that time. I could be a three. I, can, I got a two, so you only got one on me. And damage-wise, one, two, three, you four, five. Exactly rolled a five. Whew. So I have a arc left on that gate. I am good at this game. <laughs> Except for that first roll. That Except was, for that first roll. That was bad. Yeah. Uh, my second cipher for the phase, I'm going to play Reiteration Complex. Targets a friendly squad. Mm -hmm. During their... Uh, oh, no, I want to save that. I'm not going to play that right now. Okay. So never mind. Ignore I said anything. Okay. Whatever. I'm so playing with public no, knowledge. I don't care. No cipher cards. Yeah. Activate, put an activation token on those guys, right? Yep. So then we go to the summoning phase. So it's summon from a gate that's in play first, then put down a new gate. Mm -hmm. You cannot put the gate down in a range of someone who has just summoned this turn. So I have four arc over here. Yep. I'm going to spend all four arc off this gate, returning yeah. it back to my well, to summon four points worth of models who must show yep. up within an inch of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to summon... Actually, I'm going to leave You're one gonna on You're going to leave it. one on there? Yeah. So when I kill your weaver, it can come back out? I'm going to put a <laughs> weaver. They show up within one inch of it. Uh-huh. And I'm going to summon my firebrand, also within an inch of it. My okay. gate doesn't collapse because it still has any yep. arc on it. And you don't score that objective because those models didn't activate. Correct. Then, summoning's done. I can place a gate within five inches of any warrior model that was already on the board this turn, mm -hmm. not one that got summoned. I'm going to put a gate within five inches of this guy. I see your gate, <laughs> and I will match your gate. Can I gate gate each other? I will match your gate. You're going to put it past my gate down the stairs a little bit? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna because I want to go towards your objective. Yeah, you want to fight for this, and I'm gonna put two slash three. Yeah, three on it. You're gonna put three on it? Okay. Uh, I'll put two on it. Okay. I'll put two on it. Okay. Uh, summoning phase done. Then I will see if there's any cards I want to discard. Uh, I will get rid of this one. I will drop to five, and your turn starts. Oz. Okay. Cool. So. Uh, first thing, I ready because I have tokens on everything. So everybody clears. Yep. I could remove this arc or I could put out an arc. So I'm going to put an arc on my Warjack because that makes him better. He's faster now and he can shoot and he can armor pierce and all those things. Okay. Uh, your, your Firebrand has a shield, so its armor is five? Four. four. Oh, is it it's base armor it's three? It's base three. Okay. The shield makes it a four. Okay. Hmm. But it can spike with arc. Uh, to use the repulsion shield and slam you back. Yeah, yeah, I knew that. It's got like different things it can do with each of its different guns. You're so far away from my sniper with your weaver. How can I possibly shoot your weaver again? Uh, you could come closer. I could. Come closer. I think I... Closer. You're going to have cover against my, my warjack with your warjack. There is another weaver. <laughs> really? Yeah. Now I have two cards that remove activation tokens, by the way, just to keep that in mind. And still don't have a squad in the play. So my cards are... People are asking about the base size of the Warjacks. Uh, the Warjacks are on 50 millimeter yeah. bases. Yeah. Okay, what do I want to do? I don't know. I'm going to read the chat for a second while you figure out what you're okay. going to do with your I'm turn. not going to play any cards. This is my first Cypher phase. Okay. I am going to activate my Hunter. My hunter's range is 15. My hunter is going to run down the steps a little bit, uh, hide behind this, this wall. Nice. There are heavier warjacks that have more build points. 
Um, these would be considered the lights. Uh, can you put more arc on gates? You can always move one arc to something you have in play at the start of the turn. Mm -hmm. you, that could be a gate if you wanted to. You can also pull any amount of arcs. You can collapse gates that you don't want yeah. anymore. But you, when the arc allocation phase happens, your choice is put one arc from the well onto something in play, including a gate, or remove any number of arc from models back to your well. But you can't do both. You can't allocate one and return in the same turn. Okay, right, so you're, I need to borrow a white die from you. What are you, what are you doing? I'm gonna, my hunter's going to take a pot shot at your... My jack? At your jack. I have cover because I got the high ground. You do. You do. But I have my six whites and my one red. Don't do it, Oz. I've got the high ground. Uh, I only rolled a two. Well, I've got defense three. I've got two red because I've got cover. Mm -hmm. And I rolled, rolled a four. four. Okay, so I missed. You missed. Now, I could... I, this hunter's rifle also has the spike to drop your armor. Yeah. So I was going to try and Hurt maybe me. throw that because you're close enough to me and my stealth's not going to help anymore. Yeah. To maybe try and, and do more damage, but that didn't work. Okay. Let's see. I can't... So there are ladders on this square building that we yes. can climb up. But I can't really get to a ladder with my, with my Dusk Wolf. No. I can go in these doors. Maybe there's like explosives in there. But there's no hatches there. up here, man. There's doors. I see them. I they're know, but they're just going to go inside. I know. Um, so yeah. I'm speed six now. Yeah, can't you spike to move again? Or is that not? Yeah, that's uh, right. The Dusk Wolf has spike to move again. Yeah. So effectively, I can move really far. It's moved three inches, right, when you spike? It's spike to move three inches. So I'm speed six right now because I have one arc on me. Yeah, so you can move six, then spike that arc back and move three extra. Mm -hmm. If you want to come up here and fight on the rooftop with me over this I, objective, but uh, I don't think you're close enough. So six inches would get me to there, and I could get to the bottom of the ladder. Yeah. But I don't think that Cheddar, Cheddar Caveman asks, are there any blue die? No. This is only white and red die. Yeah. Whites are, the, whites are the baseline, and then reds are the special dice. Red basically come from when you have arc on something, give you extra uh, accuracy to hit, and then the amount you beat your opponent by when you hit them is how many red die you act, add to your uh, damage roll. Uh, and we haven't talked about it yet, but there's also no facing in this game. Yeah, no facing, no arcs. We haven't no talked arcs. about facing an arc. There's, yeah, there's... there's Everyone can see everything effectively. All right, Dusk Wolf, what you, what you okay. thinking about doing? Uh, I think I'm going to just take, take shots at your, at your Warjack to try, and, All right. to try and put some damage on it right away. I have the okay. high ground. I know. I'm aware. So I have, uh, I have Rat 4 plus an Arc. Yeah. So I'm rolling four whites and a red. I'm going to do it. I rolled a four that time. All right. I rolled a five. A five. So I missed you. That was with my battle rifle. Sorry, I didn't say that. Sure. That was just a little machine gun arm. And then I'm going to shoot you with my uh, rail gun. Same, same. Okay. I could shoot that gate instead. You could shoot the gate instead. It has cover. Then your paladin commander or your weaver would never come back out of it. I'm just going to shoot. <laughs> I have shoot. another gate over here, remember? I, that's what I meant, that gate. I was going to shoot that Oh, gate. yeah. Not this gate. That gate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot your warjack again. Go for it. Well, What'd I rolled better that time. So that's a five. All right. Let's see what I get. My defense roll is a five. It's so. a five. You've uh, got to stop rolling exactly what you need to stop me from shooting you. I'm going to... How else am I going to win? You don't need tactics when you just roll well. Sure, if you roll really, really well. Uh, okay, so activation tokens on your guys. Yep. So those two activated. Then, um, any second cipher card? Uh, no. All right, and then on to summoning and gate or, Oh, Oz is in the tank. No. I, I am going to play this remove an activation token from a Warjack okay. card because... I won't be able to play two cards before my next activation. Sure. Yeah. So I'm playing at the end of this one, hoping that you don't kill that guy, that he survives. Okay. He's got two hit points left. And then I'm going to summon out of my gate, so my gate will collapse, and my Boop. weaver... Oh, your weaver my showed weaver up. My weaver will be here. Hello, weaver. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a fury card at the moment, but I'm going to discard another card and then draw two cards, so maybe I'll get a, a fury card. And then I can't put a gate off of that weaver, but I can still place a gate off my hunter. So I'm going to place a gate up here on top of this <sighs> arc platform. Making things hard for me, Oz. And I'm going to put... I'm going to put three on it. I'm going to force you to attack it a bunch if you want to disrupt my plans. Okay. And then I'm going to discard a card. Uh, not that one, not that one. This one. I'm going to draw two. All right. So, turn three of the first pulse round. So, effectively, this scenario has nine turns. Yeah. We've played two yeah. each. 
So and we're getting close to the end of the round. I cannot remove all activation tokens because they've got one. These two guys mm -hmm. I summoned only have two. Yep. So now I have to allocate an arc and I have to decide if I want to make my jack better to Macho Man Randy Savage jump off the top of this oh. building and punch your jack in the head. Oh. Or put it on my weaver to give him the extra range to throw a fury across the board At into my weaver? your weaver and try and blow everyone up. Okay. I prefer that you dive off the building and try to beat me to death. Because there is falling damage in this game. Obviously you do, and it is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to put an arc on my firebrand. Now, there's a rule that if you take damage from a fall, you gain an activation token, and your activation immediately ends. Listen. So do you want, you want to do this? Look, Oz. Because you, you don't have the card that gives a Warjack flight, right? In your hand? No, I discarded it. Okay. Oz, you, you don't get glory by sure. waiting on top of rooftops. Yeah, but you might sprain your ankle, and then... I'll be fine. Sure. So first Cypher card, nothing. There's no Cypher card I want to play okay. to begin. Yep. Uh, so activations. First thing I'm going to do is my jack is going to move horizontal six and then just fall. Yep. So I'm just going to leap off the building. Yeah, that building looks like it's probably only two full it's, inches It's tall. only two full inches, so yeah. I take a POW 2 hit, which you roll, so roll I two will white roll dice. That. I will I'm armor four, so if you roll two super strikes, I take a point and lose box my activation. Boxcars. Yeah, boxcars. Now nice. get out of here with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Firebrand, it's time to uh, start doing some stuff. Okay. So I'm going to swing at your jack with my fusion glaive first. Mm -hmm. I am mat four, and I have one red from the arc on me. Yep. I am defense three. So I have hit a six. Nice. I can roll a six. Yeah, you can. I, I rolled a one. So I beat you by five. Uh -huh. The fusion glaive is pow five, so that means I roll five white, and then I beat you by five, so I roll five red. Yep. What's your armor? My armor's four, and I have two hit points. So if you roll an eight, I'm dead. Two, is that an eight? That's more than an eight. That's an eight. Okay. Hey, good job, My Firebrand. That, 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 your, your crazy tactic totally paid off. Then... That arc comes back to me. Because the firebrand is very spiteful, I'm going to shoot... you shoot my weaver? Your weaver. You'll have okay. cover because uh -huh. you have the high ground. Yep. Uh, obviously, my shield, there's nobody in range for me to punch with my shield. Uh -huh. But my harbinger cannon is uh, going to be range 12. And sure. it has strafe. It has strafe, yeah. Strafe says I roll a red die, and I can target that many other people within two inches. So, maybe so my the strafe hunter. roll is a one, and I will mm -hmm. also be shooting the hunter. Yeah, and you you're, within, you're within eight, it yeah. looks like, easily. Yeah, yep. you're about seven and a half. Yep. So first off, let me roll my shot with the Harbinger Cannon against your Weaver. Uh, I got a seven. That's a really good roll. So I'm, uh, I have def four and cover, so I have four white dice and two, two red dice, which yeah. is more dice than you rolled. Uh, By yes. one red, yeah. I rolled a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my Ugh. dice. There's my dice finally warming up. No. It's taking a while. Uh, then the strafe shot over on the hunter from my okay. cannon. I rolled a two. The hunter's death is also four. And you have cover. And I have. You definitely have cover from this. It's, I'm not close enough to that. Oh, you're not. Right? Yeah, you're not within an inch. Mm hmm. Yeah. I don't think I have. No? I don't think I have cover. Yeah, I think we're perfectly lined up. My volume and your volume yep. on that elevation. I rolled a zero. Oh, I got a. I rolled two. a zero. What, I got a two? I was. Now, uh, the hunter. The hunter is super squishy. What's his armor? Armor two and one hit point. So I have to roll a two on this? All you gotta do is roll a two. Get out of here, hunter. I rolled a two. Good job. Man, my fire brand's on fire, brand. Okay, so that arc comes back to me. Yep. Activation token goes away. Put an activation token on my firebrand. Mm -hmm. Then my bonus solo activation will be my weaver, who's going yep. to walk here and just be done. Okay. So I score so a score point there. Point. So now Hungerford has two points to my one point. Uh, backup ciphers. I do not have any I want to play. So now mm -hmm. I will go to my summoning phase. I'm going to mm -hmm. spend one arc off of this gate back here. And I'm going to summon my Paladin Commander mm -hmm. down here within an inch of that. Yep, you're going to leave that other arc on there. Yep. Then yeah. I cannot place another gate because you only ever have two gates in play at one time. Mm -hmm. So I have two gates in play that each have one. Yep. Uh, I will discard no cards. Okay. Draw up to five. I'm already at full. So back to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, K, uh, Saber says, are melee ranges unique to models? They're unique to weapons. Yeah. Yeah. But that ability of getting arc and your melee range going up is a firebrand ability. Yes. 
Okay, so my turn starts. You have a weaver. I allocate a arc to my weaver. What up, weaver? You better start summoning some bros. You do have three arc I on this game. I have three arc right there, and um, my squad costs two, and my hunter costs one, so they can all come back out because you didn't attack it. The only problem is, is I still haven't drawn a fury card. Wah, wah. Even though I, I dumped a couple cards. Um, I did, I did get a remove an act. I still have that remove an activation from a solo, and I have a charge a model with as much arc as I wanted. So if that warjack wouldn't have died, I would have dumped a bunch of arc into it with that with that card. So there are ways to manipulate the arc as opposed to just that one yeah. that you can give out there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, my weaver is going to shoot at your at your paladin commander just with with the off chance that maybe maybe you just I murder get him. you and you don't score that point. I am def 3 arm 3 and have 2 health and I don't have cover. Okay. So I'm going to move first. Yeah. My speed is 6. My range is 8 cuz I have a, effectively a pistol. Models do block movement. You can't move through models, yeah. including your free friendlies. Gates do not. You can move through gates. Yeah. You just can't stop on top of a gate. And uh, these handmade prototype gates are effectively what you'll get in the game. Yeah. You'll get a base. You'll get a token insert with a slot in it, and then a, a vertical token like these things. I have hot glued these to bases because we don't have cardboard. The question is, is there a limit to the models, or can I just spam souls out of the gate? If you have arc to spend off the gate back to your mm -hmm. well, you can summon models out of them. But the the twist there is your activation system. Since yes. it's since it's a solo and something else, if you have five arc on a gate and you throw five solos out, that's gonna kind of be weird activation wise over the long term. Yes. But maybe that's what you want to do because maybe you have buffs and things that come out of those. It solos. also depends on your scenario. Some scenarios yeah. the objectives can only be scored by squads, some by yep. warjacks. Yep. Some you have to like run and grab an explosive that can only be done with a jack who has to run it to a, a depot and drop it off. Yep. It depends on the scenario. Okay, so the rat on my weaver is a three and I have an arc on me. I'm defense three. Mm -hmm. uh, Saber asks, you have to be within one inch when you summon. Is the gate any token? It's a 30 millimeter base. The actual game will have 30 millimeter bases and then a token, mm -hmm. a 3D token that slots down inside the base. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, then, and then a piece that sticks up much like this. Yep. Okay. So show me what you got. I got a five. I don't want that. I rolled better than a bunch of my rolls. I got, a, you four. got a four. Ooh. I hit you. I hit you. So my Weaver's pit, uh, handgun power is three. So same dice to see if I damage yeah. you. Beat me by one. I'm armor three. Your armor three. So and you have two hit points. I'm I have guessing. two hit points. If you roll a six, I'm dead. So I got to get a six to just to just don't do it. Us cap you. Don't do it. Us. It'll be amazing. Don't do it. That's a one. I'll take no damage. No damage. But Weaver's their job is not really. Destroying things. They just have a pistol in case. Okay. Okay. So, um, I put an activation token on that weaver. Yep. I play this card to remove it. Okay. Also to get that card out of my hand. Um, then I summon and place a gate. Yes, sir. So this is where uh, I do what you do over. You did over there. Are you, how many arc are you spending? All three of it. So you're gonna put down a jack or so a squad in a solo. I'm gonna put out a squad in a solo. I could put our Warjack in the solo, but we haven't seen my squad in play yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is a bit of a demo. So I'm going to put the Ranger Fire team down. So they must all be within one inch. No, the, oh, first, sorry, the, the first, first guy has within an inch. inch. And then every other model has to be within two inches of the, that model. You and coherency in the game is two inches, by the way. Yeah. So we're going to do, we're going to do that with those guys. Yeah. But this I, the then, summoned model must be within an inch. And then the Hunter pops out of the gate back yep. there. So you have no arc on the gate, your and gate then that collapses. collapses. Then. Then I place a new gate off of the Weaver, which is the only warrior model I have in play. That wasn't summoned this turn. It wasn't summoned this turn. And how much Back arc? there, and I'm going to put three on it. My Warjack only cost me two, but, yeah, but that'll give me a little bit of armor on that gate in case you decide to shoot at it. All right. Do you want to discard a card and then draw back up? I do want to discard a, a card and draw back up. Uh, I, want to, I want to keep that card, and I want to discard this card. Okay. All right. So, so, as my turn starts, the first pulse round has ended because Oz and I have both taken three. So it comes back to I, one. 
I shuffled badly. All my Furies are on the bottom of this deck. <laughs> uh, so what happens? We are now in Pulse Round 2, which has all objectives in this scenario now worth two VPs. And when a Pulse Round happens, any effects from Cyphers that say they last until the end of the Pulse Round mm -hmm. go away. These are usually buffs and debuffs. Also, yep. all activation tokens get removed. Yep. So everybody that has an activation token so gets I, picked up. So I played that card to remove this activation token to move it out of my hand to, to dig for, for cards. So it comes to me. And mm -hmm. let's let's just get going, you, man. You jacked up the thing. You could barely, oh, my barely see it through the underneath the warcaster sign. Uh, I have no arc to or, or activation tokens to remove. Yep. I will allocate one arc to my weaver. Mm -hmm. uh, I will play reiteration complex as my first cipher. It says target a squad yeah. during their activation. Each model of squad can make one additional ranged attack. Okay. I will go to my activation phase. And that's an additional range attack, so you can choose to take a melee attack as their normal activation and then shoot, yes. or you can shoot twice. But what I'm gonna do, because I need to move back here, is they're gonna want to move this guy, point, yeah. then I'm going to teleport them, mm -hmm. or reform here. Yeah, yeah. Then we're gonna start shooting. Uh, and this arc is on them, right? This arc is on them. Okay. Because it's been on since the first yep. round. So, they get two shots a turn because of reiteration complex. Yep. He's gonna shoot right here. Okay, so this is a ranger fire team. Their death is three. I rolled a four. And I don't have any cover because we're on a flat surface. Show up on I my rolled flat. a three. So I beat you by one? Okay, yep. Wh which armor? Uh, their armor is also three. She is unfortunately no longer this, 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 the front one. Oh, that's, 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 that's a he. Oh, this is he a is she. no longer with us. Yeah. Okay. Second shot from him will go into her. Okay. I rolled a two. I rolled a I'll, one. I'll beat you by one. Armor three, Only you live. Damage. Okay, yep. His first shot will go into her. Cool. Let's see what I hit. I got a four. I got a three. Could you stop beating me? I got three. Or let I me beat, beat you by you. one? Oh, she's, yeah, uh, yeah, she's that's, no longer with that's us. That's a bunch of doubles. Second shot at the last guy. Yeah. Get off my platform. We got you only two. got a two. You only got a two. Ah. I got a two. So Double. his two shots. Shot one, same target. Okay. I said get off. I said get off my platform. That's a six. I rolled a six. I can roll a six. <laughs> you can roll a six. Uh, let's put that on the camera. I rolled a three. So I beat you by three. Mm -hmm. You got a three. Very much gone. Okay. So that, that rage is done. Extra shot at the hunter across from me. Okay. Sure. I got a five. Hunters are defense four. I got a zero. Oh no. I got a zero. Uh, yeah, the I hunter, will hunter has a hit point and two armor. So the hunter. Remove him from the land of the, the living. Hunter is gone. They get an activation token. Tony, I score two points, putting me up to four. My bonus solo will be my, my paladin Your commander. Paladin commander. Are you going to walk down here and score and then shoot my weaver in the back? I'm going to shoot, then walk down. Okay, yeah, you can do that. So my paladin commander is going to fire his pulse cannon at you. I mm -hmm. don't have any arc on him, so it's just my flat rat. Yep. I rolled a four. Okay, but I have the high ground. You do have the high ground. I rolled a three. You hit me. So this is a blast weapon. If you had other people nearby, yeah. it means I would roll just the base pal, just the white die against other, uh, up to two others within two inches, mm -hmm. but there's not. What's your armor? Uh, Weaver is three. And you have how many hit points? Uh, Weavers have two. So I need to roll a six on this to kill you? You need to roll a six to kill it. Kill me. How about and nothing? You, you didn't even hurt me. Okay. Then I'm going to move down here down onto your objective. That's not my objective. It's These your objective. These are all just objectives. And I'm going to score two more, Tony, putting me mm -hmm. at six. Then, activation, I can go to my second, we, uh, my second uh, cipher, cipher if I yeah. want one. Yeah. Uh, I am going to play... Nothing, because I killed everything? Cheers, I'm not gonna play anything. <laughs> sure. Uh, gates, I don't have any more gates to put down. Summoning, I don't have any more models to summon. All my, my forces are on the board. They I'll are. drop to five, and it's your turn. Okay, so uh, I don't clear tokens. I only have a Weaver, and he's got no activation token on him. Uh, I can't allocate any more arc to the Weaver. I could put an extra arc on that gate, though. So I'm going to. So now it has four. Luke McCool says, no templates in the game. Uh, blast is resolved. You hit something, and then you measure off of them. And then sprays are, you take your measurement tape, you make a line, you and it hits everything line. under the line. Yeah. But so there there's, 
There, we're not producing templates, but there are weapons that act like template weapons. Correct. Okay, Weaver. Acrostore says you're getting diced hard, and I agree. I am dicing. Hey, every I am once dicing in a while. you so hard. Every once in a while, but yeah, those blanks were killing me. I have the board on lockdown right now. You, you need to come back do. hard. Come back hard, but Oz. I can, I'm going to come out of that gate, and those guys have already activated this turn. Yeah. And unless you have a card that removes the activation token. So one thing, as you're, you're figuring out what you're doing, you know about Warcaster is getting tabled isn't really a thing that can happen in Warcaster because the models are always coming back. This is a yeah. game about determining where you're deploying your troops, where are you putting those jacks, who can you remove to take strategic points, and how are you fighting over the board? Yeah. This is a game not about attrition. This is a game about strategic positioning yeah. and reacting to what's happening. The other thing to, to, to really keep in mind, we're playing with battle boxes, which are four units. Yeah. A skirmish mode, and it's, it's a skirmish game in general, but we're calling the smaller size skirmish. That's eight units, and a full size four by four game is up to 15. Yeah. So, Which in a is full big. size game where there's a lot of objectives and they're really far out, then there's a lot more models that get in play and a lot more things happen. And you're constantly summoning because you have a, a big bench. Yeah, of when you're playing the 15 from. unit game, you're literally having gates all, you know, you're, you're like, okay, these guys have to show up here. I've got to take and hold this, but I need a runner to go out there and throw a gate down, yeah. and show up on the side of the board. But as you see, the whole board gets used. It's the middle of the game, effectively, and I am on Oz's side, my side, and across the middle. Yeah. The other thing we haven't mentioned yet is we've been saying that you can drop gates off of warrior models that haven't been summoned that turn. Yeah. You can also always drop a gate five inches off your edge of the table. Yeah. If all so if for some reason you're playing warjack heavy and you have three warjacks and no warriors, you can still pop gates out on the back side of the table. Yep. Basically in your deployment zone. Which is a big penalty when it happens because yeah, you but, want to be upfield. But it's but it's it's handy to have that ability to, to drop that you're back in the or game. whatever. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So my weaver <laughs> my weaver really wants to, to go after your paladin commander. Um, but my weaver is also the only way I can place another gate this turn. So my weaver is going to move to here. Okay. Standing precariously on the edge of the art geyser platform. Uh huh. And then. Bust a cap at somebody? Probably just shoot a paladin. Probably just shoot a paladin. Because paladins have proven to be invincible. They have. Now you have an arc on you, so you get I a have red an arc. on your attack. So I get my, my rat of three, white dice, and my arc. I rolled a four. Easy game. That's a pretty good roll. Easy. I rolled, rolled a two. two. I'm armor three. So I, I basically add a red die to my roll, because the power of my handgun is three. Impossible and to roll a three. What's your armor, three or four? Three. Okay. Oh, that, that guy's hella That is a uh, six. Yeah. I roll them good when I don't need them. It's awesome. You killed Jimmy. Okay. He didn't make it. So, uh, yeah, I popped off that character. Uh, and then I get an activation token. Yep. Second cipher if you want one. My, uh, my hand is not working out for me so far. These are all geometrics, which oh. are target squads. And these harmonics are... You just need a squad to stay in play. I'm going to play this. I'm going to play this aggression. Aggression theorem. Target-friendly model. Yeah. The can target model can immediately make a melee or ranged attack. So you're going to have your weaver? So my weaver is just going to keep fire in that pistol. So he, okay, I'm into it. I was hoping to play that card on, this, on the hunter sure. or a warjack, but I think it's important to try and get as many of your models off the table I as might possible. have the recall this unit. I get? rolled a two. They rolled a two? I rolled a zero. zero. Ow. Two red dice and three white dice. I need to roll a three. I got a two. Woo. Come on, Weaver. Woo. Come on, Weaver. Paladin and Enforcers live forever. Yeah. Okay, so now I'm going to summon. Yep. Um, I'm going to summon my whole army. Here. Here's yeah. all four give of your my, arc back. Give me my arc back. Um, okay, so... That's not cool. So the Warjack will pop out there. Yeah, I noticed. The... Uh, does the squad want... Does one of the squad guys want to jump off the platform and run across the table the other direction? I could put a squad member here and then the two other ones down... Down the ground. You could, but then but then, that one would have to jump off. But then Linda here has to take a nose dive off the. Yeah, uh, so let's not do that. Let's put let's put this squad over here to fight against your paladins that I have slowly whittled down to two thirds of their original starting power. All right, 
I know, so you're not jumping in the geyser itself. I'm not going to jump in the geyser. I mean, that's where all the arc is, and that's what we're fighting over. Okay. But it's not, it's not worth it. Your gate collapses. My gate collapses. Do you want to put I'm another gonna put gate? I'm going to put another gate back out. Okay. That's why I moved my weaver up there. Okay. So I could drop a gate out here in the middle of the table. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put... Th I'm going to put... If you wipe out my entire squad and a solo again, I will need three. I'm going to put three on it and maybe regret that, but I can always pull it all off later if I want. Okay. And then I'm going to discard another card at the end of my turn. Okay. I'm going to keep that card. It's a good card. I'm going <coughs> to keep that card because you played it on me. And that's a good card too. So I'm going to... I don't, ugh, I don't want to discard any of these now. All right. I'm going to keep them all. I'm going to draw one, and it's a geometric. All right. So Tracker moves up to turn two of round uh -huh. two. Yep. Uh, I have an activation token on them. I don't on the Firebrand yeah, and the Weaver. The commander activated. So Instead got of miles. allocating an arc, I'm going to yank any number of arc I want. I'm going to take an arc off this gate and an arc off this gate. Oh, no gates. Collapsing both my gates, mm -hmm. but giving me four arc in my to, well, which makes to, my spell stronger. Yeah, to cast Cyphers to Fury is better. Yeah. So... Cypher phase, I'm going to play, play Cryo Lock, which is range 17, out of my Weaver into you your try Jack. And freeze my Warjack? Yeah, I am. Okay, Cryo Lock puts an activation token on, on a model. So, so four whites, because that's my focus stat on my Weaver. Okay, there, four uh, reds. No, there's no cover because we're at the same yep. elevation, basically. Four reds because I have four uh -huh. arc in my well. I have hit a five. You didn't roll super great. I have a uh, depth of three. I rolled a one. Put it activate. It does no damage, but put an yep. activation token on your jack. Yep. So, I, I, I'm a little frozen. Then my activation. I will activate my weaver, who will move here and end his activation. Tony, I score two more, putting me at yep. eight. Yep. My firebrand is going to move. Is he going to punch my gate? Oh, I'm going to punch the hell out of this gate. I got nothing to summon anymore. I just put that out for insurance. I know, but in I don't want to. In case you somehow threw a blast cipher and destroyed all of those models. It's with in the middle of my... Insane dice rolls. I don't want it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to punch your gate, Oz. First with the glaive. Uh, I rolled a three against your defense of three on the gate. Okay. Um, someone's saying that they've noticed the cards have no art. There is art on the cards. Mm -hmm. These are the final production cards. And up here, where I'm pointing... Uh, there's a little a circle, and there's a glyph in there. So there's like a rune on each card that is unique. Yeah. And so like the cards that give you speed, the rune kind of has a pointy shape and stuff. Yeah. So there, each card has a unique piece of art, but there's not illustrations on the card. Correct. I rolled three. Did uh, you roll? I rolled a three. Oh, cool. My gate completely defended. Uh, I'll try and hit it with the shield. Okay. I rolled a three. Another three. Can I roll another three on my... Don't do this to me. Three white dice. Oh. That was a that was a hit, but it oh it blanked on the All right. camera. Got to play it on camera. Oh, don't. So I, I beat you by two. You beat me by two that time. So the pal on the shield is, is, is only, only like a two. It's only two. Yeah, it doesn't hit really hard. But I can slam your gate away you if I want it. You could spike to slam my gate away. I don't want to do that. I like the gate. I don't want to get it. Oh, you know what? It is kind of an annoying place. Nah. I'm, leave it there. I'm kind of going toward this central point with it. Armor five. I'll knock One. an arc off. Okay. Cool. One. And then with the Harbinger Cannon, yeah, uh, which has Strafe, yep. I'm going to shoot at the Weaver. The Weaver, okay. I get to shoot at an additional one target, which will be Linda. Sure. I am Rat 4. You have cover because you have the high ground. Uh -huh. So let's see if I hit you. I rolled a 5 on the Weaver. One, two, three, four. Oh. Only a four. So you get me by one. Damage roll is a five. A What's five. Your... That my weaver's armor three. So I do one point. So you did one point. Okay. And then on her, I rolled a three. Uh, and death on death on the fire team is three. Plus you have cover. So I still have cover. What'd you roll? Uh, not a four. I got a four. Okay. Cool. All right, activation token, activation token. Then, for my second cipher, I'm going to play instability equation. Okay. Here. Which you saw, uh, Actually, I'll do it on, the, on your weaver. You're going to weave my weaver? So, if this attack hits, resolve the attack against the target as normal. Additionally, when it hits, the two models closer to it, also within two inches, suffer blast damage, which would okay. be these two. Yeah. So, I have four arc in my well, which means my roll to hit your weaver with instability equation is a four, six, 
eight, a 10. A 10, I have four white dice. I'm gonna roll a 10, even though I can't. That's not possible. I, I rolled a four, that was okay. pretty good. It's pow four. Yep. Which means the other person will take just four whites, yeah. but the weaver but that, takes the full weaver's brunt. gonna take the full blast of that. And more than likely be pulped. And then the, I didn't even look at what you rolled. It was just, it was high. The blast damage on her is enough to kill her. Uh, it was this one, or the yeah. hood? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good cipher phase, good cipher phase. All right, now I cannot summon because I have no gates in play, no gates but I don't have play. anyone I really want to summon. Okay. I'm gonna put a gate down. Yeah, back there. Back you think here. that that squad might finally not be on the table anymore after my turn? I, I, I would like that to <laughs> not be the case. Uh, and I'm gonna put three arc, three arc onto it. Okay. Uh, then I will draw two and Oz, it's your go. Cool, so um, I don't ready, because you activated my Warjack, which I, is annoying. I activated your trap. Because I have this, card that puts any number of arc on a model. I don't want that. Um, yeah, I don't need your Duskwolf uh, maxing out and murdering me, man. So we're going to put an arc on the squad, because I haven't done anything with the squad yet. And I'm going to play... Ed the Mad, do Cyphers have a cost? No. Uh, Furies have to be in range from your Weaver, the offensive ones. Everything else just has a target that it has to be on. Yeah. And um, part of the cost is that they target specific things and certain types of cards target things. So you might not have the cards you need when you need them. Yeah. But I'm gonna play Reiteration Matrix, which is what you played earlier, a squad's activation. They get an extra shot with their guns. Epic Cray also called out, this is, a, this is the equivalent of a battle box game. Yes. Yes, it is. So um, Fully playable with just the starters out the box. Yeah. And your jacks don't have to be these jacks. You can customize them. There's a couple of other parts to customize them with inside the starters. Yep. So I'm gonna move this squad oh. by moving that model and then putting that model within two inches. Don't do this to me. So if I machine gun your squad off this point, then I score it. You only need to machine gun this guy because he's the only one with an yeah. inch. I didn't get to activate that's them who we're gonna. That's who we're gonna shoot at the most. Okay. What, what if so, you didn't instead? Well, but I mean, you've removed a lot of my models off the table, so I only feel it's fair but if I return the favor. Yeah, I don't want Okay, that. so uh, the Ranger Fire team's rat is three and they have an arc on them because you charge an entire squad, not individual models. Yep. So shot so one. So I rolled a six. six. Cheers. I rolled a six on that roll and you uh, rolled. I rolled a blank. A zero. So what's your pow? Uh, the pow on their uh, battle rifles is four. And four whites and six reds? Four whites and six reds. Uh, can, I, can, I, can I have six reds? Uh, yeah, how many do you need? Oh, uh, five. There you go. Okay, cool. I'm armor three. Good luck. Okay, yeah. You got it. Yeah, you got it. Um, and then that model's second shot is going to be against oh. the other paladin. I got to get the right dice. I'm going to turn him to... He wants to face... Yeah, there's no, face there's no facing in this game, so what he I... He wants to look into his enemy's What I like eyes. to do is turn models around oh, so that it looks cool. You got to do the narrative. The, 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 yeah. He's like, what happened back okay, there? Okay, that shot... All the energy went into the first one. I only got a two on that second shot. I got a two. You, you got missed. a two. Okay, so my other other ranger is going to fire on that paladin. Okay. And that shot is a five. It's a, an opening salvo, man. Uh, I got a five. You rolled a five. Okay, second shot. He's just. I rolled a four that time. I got a two. Ooh, one of those dice was looking like it might get a double. Okay, so I got two reds and three whites. Yep. And that is, that is, he's gone. That's enough. So his arc goes back to my well. Yep. You get an activation token. I do and get an activation token. And you score token. two, because we're in pulse round two. I score that two. That was my... So Oz is at three. That was my unit. Yep, and then you have your hunter can do something. Mm -hmm. So my hunter is just going to take a shot at your weaver. Sure. I don't have any arc on me, but hunters have rat six. What's your range? Uh, it's ranged a bunch. It's like, it's 15. Oh yeah. You're and you cuz you've been throwing spells at me about that range. Yeah. I need uh I need to borrow a couple white dice. Oh sure. Sure sure. Just just two. I'm defense 3. That is a 4. I rolled a blank. Okay. Good luck beating that. So the pow on the sniper rifle is a 4 and I get four whites and four reds cuz you rolled a blank and I rolled a 4. I'm armor 3. 
I have two, two hit, hit points. points. Okay, so I need a six to snipe you off the table. And I could spike to drop your armor by one, but I don't have any arc on me. Sure. One, two, three, four, five. Oof. A damage. It's like a damage. So close. Um, I can I can fire and move with that model. So I'm gonna go three inches back this direction to maybe do something about this paladin commander back here. Mm -hmm. Then I can summon. Now you'll have models off the table, and the rulebook even has a call out that says. You should mark what squads or what squads by paint jobs or yeah. base marking or whatever. I have one Ranger Fire Team model over here, mm. but it's part of that squad. So you can't summon. So it by I can't itself. summon a single model that's part of an existing squad. There are cards that can return destroyed models to the table, which I did not play a cipher at the end of my activation phase. Yeah. So I'm going to play that target friendly squad. Just gets a guy back. Return one destroyed non attachment model. That says non attachment because there are attachments in the game. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're gonna put we're gonna put that one within two, right there. Okay. I like. Then what I'm going to drop drop out my weaver right in the middle of the table where yours was earlier when I tried to shoot you off the table. Oh hi. And then uh, I'm going to since I moved my hunter over here, I'm gonna try to put a gate back over here. So where's my oh it's over here. Could not figure out where my gate went. Put a gate there. And I'm just going to put two on it because nothing is dead right now, but you might, you might destroy something and I might want to pull something back out. All right, you good? Oh, drop to five. And I, I, I can discard. Yep. I'm going to keep all three of these and I'm going to finally draw Fury cards, right? If you ever run out of cards in your Cypher deck, you just reshuffle. Yeah. I drew, I drew a Fury finally. Turn three of round two. Mm hmm Everything on my side of the board has an activation token. Yep. I've also scored everything on the board. You so have scored everything this round, so you I can't, can't score, score this anymore. Turn. So, arc. I will put an arc on my Ooh. firebrand. Firebrand has two arc now. It's the first time we've seen a warjack with multiple arc. Uh, I first cipher phase. I'm going to play momentum calibrator. Target a friendly warjack. When a Warjack hits an equal or smaller base with a melee attack before damage is rolled, the model is slammed you, directly away from the Warjack. Are you going to slam my Weaver into that pipe? I'm going to slam your gate into the Weaver. Okay, sure. You might miss, though. What if you miss? Activation phase, I will go with the Jack. Okay. The Jack is going to... And that card's effectively... Does it last until the end of the activation? Of, the, of this turn, yeah. Okay. So it's effectively in play still, but we know what it does, so we're not leaving it on the table or anything. Uh, I have plus two range on all my melee attacks, mm -hmm. so I'm actually going to come stand here. Well, if you slam my gate, then it uh, will go. It would. Go it won't wrong. hit my weaver. That makes me so sad. Uh, you know what I could do? I could just slam your weaver into a pipe. You could slam my weaver into a pipe. Yep. I'm going to sw hit the weaver with the shield first. Kay. I get two reds because I got two arc on me. Mm -hmm. I have defense. Hiya! I have defense four. I rolled a four. I'm going to roll a four. You Only three. a three. That was close. So the first thing that happens is I slam you into this, uh -huh. which means you take an extra red of damage. Mm -hmm. I beat you by one. It's a pal two shield. So nothing. Nothing. Then the fusion glaive. You're going to whack my gate. Uh, I am going to whack your gate. Okay. My gate's got death three. I rolled a four. Okay. You've been very consistent with your dice rolls of four. I try. I rolled a zero. Well, the fusion. I've been really consistent <laughs> with my dice rolls of zero. Pal five, beat you by two. You have one arc on you. I have one arc. So uh, you need to roll a five. Which I got. Which you, you got a six, so you barely got a five. Yep, so that clears so that the arc off that and collapses your gate. Yep. Then with my harbinger. But that gate wasn't important anyway. No. My harbinger cannon is going to fire up at this guy. Uh huh. And I'm going to strafe once. Yep. And I will strafe to this one. Okay. So shot one on the first one, and you obviously have cover from these. Yep. The Harbinger Cannon gets a five. One, that's a three. Woo. So I beat you by two. Armor three, I actually don't kill you. That's only a two. Shot two over here, I got a four. Okay. Same, same dice. Yep. You got way higher. I got a six. Well, Firebrand, you did some cool things. Well, melee-wise, the gun, you know, 
gun has a hard time shooting uphill. <sighs> my Paladin Enforcer doesn't really want to move from that. Your commander back here? Yeah. So actually, yeah. my bonus solo activation is going to be my Weaver. Okay. And my Weaver is going to take out... Pistol me? Heck yeah. Uh, I am going to shoot down with my, uh, my handgun. Just yeah. a straight up gun. Yep, just a pistol. And I'm going to shoot your Weaver, who's got taken a point of damage already. Yep. I rolled a two. You could bot me with your with your magic stick too. If you I want to stay up there though. I know. I know. You got a two. Buff. I got a four. Buff. Buff. What are you doing, Weaver? Being a Weaver, they're not. They're they're they're, they're wizards. They don't. Uh, I can't score anything. Yeah. Uh, I will play. Mm, I will play. Aggression theorem. Okay. As my cipher, I'll tell my firebrand to attack again. Okay. Uh, it's glaive, I believe, is normally range. It's it's range one. three right now. Yeah, it's range. So you three. can punch my hunter up on that thing. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. And yeah. you don't get cover against melee nope. attacks. But I get death four still. So aggression theorem says I got to attack uh, immediately with one melee range attack. So I'm gonna have him swing the glaive up and try and clean, yeah. clear that hunter off. I rolled a six. I rolled a two. I'll beat you I bet by. I'm uh, just gonna die really easy again like last time. Because so hunters, we're hunters gonna, don't like getting punched. We're just going to reach up and swat him off. Hunters do not like getting punched. Summoning. I'll spend two arc here. I'll Those summon paladins are gonna the come Paladin back. Enforcer Squad. Yeah. Back in contesting range of this objective. So this activation token is mine yep. on those guys. I'll leave one on that gate. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to put down another gate right here. And I'm going to put one arc onto it. Okay. Then I will discard nothing. Cool. And I'll drop to five. Okay. So I'm gonna. I'm oh, there's gonna... my buffs. I was wondering where they were gonna show up. <laughs> I don't. I don't clear tokens because I have one model that hasn't activated yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I am gonna allocate an arc to my weaver because that's cool. And then I'm gonna play this geometric temporal cycle. Remove the activation token from a squad. How dare you! Well, you froze my Warjack, so how, how dare I'm you? I'm going to multi-activate my, and I know my uh, Warjack remove activation token is in my discard pile. <clears throat> so, so I have two two things I can activate: my Weaver solo, and I I drew the Velocity Projector Slam Fury, and your Warjack standing near that near that Art Geyser. So I might I might return the Slam favor. Okay, so um, I can't put out as many bullets as I did last time with those rangers against those paladins. Mm -hmm. So we're about to go into the third round and I need to score some more points to get some rounds. Yes. To get some stuff in the third round. So I don't want to give up on contesting that point. So I'm going to activate the squad. Okay. They're going to get closer to the objective. Okay. So that two of them are within an inch of it. Okay. And they're just going to be all in your face. Ooh. Now, they do have fusion blades, but the fusion blades pow is three instead of four with a rifle, so I'm going to shoot you with their... I'm going to just unload the machine guns in your face. Yeah. Why, okay. Why not? Yeah. So uh, I have rat three and an arc on me, so well, I'm rolling. One of the cool things my paladin enforcers can do is if I charge them with an arc, they can make their melee attack and their range yep. attack in the same activation, so yep. they can bayonet you and then shoot you with mm -hmm. the assault rifle. Okay, so the first shot, the guy on the end, that's a six. Why? Well, I got a two. Okay. So, pow four and four reds? Yeah. I guess yeah. arm three? Yeah. M machine gun. Okay, he's, he's dead. He, he, he gone. Yeah, he doesn't like any of that. Uh-huh. He just, he just jumped back in that gate. He's just like, I'm out. He's out. Uh, middle shot on middle shot. Okay. I got a one, one. on that time. Uh, I got, got a three. three. Okay. And then the far, the hood versus the... Middle shot? The middle shot. Yeah, because that's the one you need to clear off so that you can take that. Yeah, but, but I've already scored it this round. Oh, you've already scored it. Well, you still I'm just trying to contest it right now. Yeah. What'd you get, a three? <clears throat> three. Uh, I'd beat me by one. So one white die added to my roll. And that, that one, I got a three, exactly. Ruined my so plans for my next turn. That one's also gone. All right. Who else would you like to activate? Uh, I have to activate my Weaver. It's the only other model I can activate. Yeah. What are you going to do, little Weaver? So, what does the Weaver want to do? The Weaver wants to get closer 
to here so I can put a gate up on top of there. Don't do it. So the weaver's speed is something like six. Yep. So the weaver's gonna watch the bottom of the, of the ladder. Okay. And that was only like three inches. Um, and then the weaver is going to shoot your warjack in the back of the head. Okay. I've I mean, got an arc. I have the reflex cortex that says after I get shot, I get to move three inches. I'm not gonna shoot you in the back of the head. Okay. Uh, I don't have any other targets. Yeah. I can't really get much in the way of line of sight to that model. So I'm just gonna give up on that pitiful pistol shot that wouldn't have done anything and would have got let you move away. Yeah. And I'm going to play this Fury Velocity Projector out of that Weaver. Okay. And it is, uh, I slam you three inches directly away from me. You targeted my jack? Yes. That's rude. So I get four white dice, because that's my Weaver stats. And, and then I get three, three Fury. I mean, three reds, because that's how much arc I have in my well. Sure. And your def is three. Oh yeah. So that is a five. I rolled nothing. Versus nothing. All right. Okay, so you're slammed away. Three inches. I got, I got five on you. Uh, I will hit this, mm -hmm. so I stop and you'll get an extra red on me. Yep, and then my pow is four, so I roll four whites. Mm -hmm. The five blues for hitting you really good, and then a red for you slamming into something. And I'm armor four. And you're holding that shield up, smashing into that wall, armor four. I will live forever. So if I roll a 12, because you, you haven't uh, taken any damage? He hasn't taken any damage. If I roll a 12, I just paste them against that wall. It's impossible. I, I don't know about impossible. It's possible. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll take two. So two. That's close to twelve. Then I get to move three inches because of my reflex cortex. Mm -hmm. And he's just going to be like, what did you do? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't mind me. I'm, I'm, just, I'm just chilling down here. Uh, all right, do you want to summon out of your gate? Uh, you don't have anything, oh, you can summon your hunter. I can bring my hunter back. And that's what I put this gate over here for, just in case you got rid of my hunter, I could bring it back. Okay. And then I'm going to put out my other gate, which is over here, up on top of this building, okay. which is within five of that model down there, and put a couple on it. I don't have anybody to summon right now, but if anybody, I mean, my models have been leaving the table at a steady pace, so I think I'll probably be able to yeah. jump up there later. Uh, and that's you? And that is all of my stuff. So drop to five? So I drop to five. Do I want to discard first? So. No, I don't want to discard first. Next round starts. Pulse round three begins, because it's come back to my first go. Mm -hmm. All activation tokens get removed. All the objectives are worth three now. Yep. And unfortunately, Oz, I think I've got you. I think you do. Because there is a... With so that we'll, model, we'll, we'll go with that model. Yeah, we'll go through it. Yeah. So my turn starts. I will allocate an arc to the Paladin Commander. Mm -hmm. I will not play any cards currently. Yeah. And there is a point when you're playing the game that when you look at the score, you, you are supposed to kind of call it. Yeah. Right? Well, but also, this is the battle box game with the starter scenario yeah. to teach you the fundamentals of the game. Yeah. It's not meant to be the most robust experience to play the game for years and years and oh, years. Oh, sure, sure. But also, just in general scenario yeah. play, it will come to a point where you can look at Pulse Round 3. And we kind of say in the rules, if someone clearly has, has won to a certain point, like, you feel free to play the game through or feel free to, yeah. to, yeah, to yeah. call it. Yeah. So I'm not going to play a Cypher card. I'm going to activate my Weaver and my Paladin Commander. Commander. That'll score me six, because mm -hmm. you didn't, weren't able to get anybody within an yeah. inch to stop me, mm -hmm. which puts me up to 14. Yep. Which means even if you score all three this turn. Yeah, if I get all nine, nine I'll be at 12. You'll be at 12. So that, yeah. there, that means at this point, Oz and I can finally yeah. say, yeah. good game. Good game. And we're done. So. So that's the basics. That is the basics. There are elements of the game we didn't talk about. Like I mentioned, there are attachments, but we're not going to go deep into what attachments mean and all that kind of stuff. Also, a lot of the flavor is going to come from the individual unit types, what they can do with their spiking arc, mm -hmm. which we never got to see. For example, my paladin enforcers can spike arc to ignore cover and yep. stealth. And I talked about my armor piercing spiking yeah. and that kind of stuff. My paladin enforcer can spike to remove an activation token from a paladin squad, mm -hmm. but I ended up not needing it this yeah. game. Because I went for a spread and take, and then the fight sort of drew in here. Well, I found in, myself and, not in this battle box game, that's going to be a lot less frequent because you only have these four units. Correct. But that paladin buffing the paladin squad, that happens a lot more in a full-size yeah. game. So building from this to a full-size skirmish force would be eight units, basically four more things. That could be four more squads, four more solos, four more warjacks, any combination that you yep. want. And then yep. you would have the, the full skirmish size of what the game is. Then going larger from that would be 15. Yeah, on a full four by four, 
with a lot more objective action yeah. going on. So let's look at the starters one more time because if you just basically do yeah. double starters, if you just get two starters at the same time, mm -hmm. you have a full-size skirmish force. Yeah. And the jacks could be done yeah. differently. I don't know exactly what parts that there are in there to build it differently, but I do know that there are some different parts in the starter. It has, it has different Cortex options and it has different weapon options yep. in it. Uh, so that is a good way to start, but when the Kickstarter goes live, everyone will see the options to yeah. get in. So if you're yeah. looking to get in at skirmish level, eight units is, is a good way to start. If you're getting looking to get at full size, like army level, yeah. that's 15 units. Mm -hmm. And that kind of depends on how do you want to play this game? Do you want to play on a 30 by 30? Do you yeah. want uh, the more skirmish back and forth? Or do you want to have this game where like, you just have stuff dropping in yep. constantly? Yeah, you know? and there's a lot of other kinds of models and stuff we're gonna talk about during the Kickstarter. Yeah. There's a lot of other scenarios. One of my favorites is there's like this thing dropping uh, like arc, uh, arc deposits down yeah. in the middle of the board and you have to run up and grab them and then there's different uh, depositories off the side. Yeah. And your models have to run up and grab this thing and then run off and then get back. And you're trying to create, tra trying to create supply lines mm -hmm. where you're running it in and scoring points. And your opponent's trying to disrupt that and you're trying to disrupt them and stuff like yeah. that. There's a lot of like narrative flavor to add to this in any which way you yeah. want to build it. My favorite is there's a ring of six objectives in the middle-ish of the board. Oh, and a two of and them are... And you roll, you roll a, the d6 and they're all numbered. And that one and the one opposite it fire off. And they're worth more. And they're worth more points. So you can score any of the objectives by holding them at the end of the pulse round. Yeah. But if you, if you hold the arcs, geysers that are firing off, there's a lot more power there, so you get more points. And those are most scenarios, you only score VPs at the end of the pulse round. You don't score them at the end of the unit's activation like you do in the yeah. opening battle box skirmish scenario. Yeah. Uh, so that's one where you have to like run out and take and hold and try and fight people. Yeah. Off, so uh, anyway, thank you everyone for joining mm -hmm. us. Uh, we went a little bit, you know, an hour and a half, including this, demoing this, the game. This isn't that bad for a staff showdown. Yeah. It's not that bad for staff showdown. Yeah. For all of you that had questions, I saw a lot of them coming by. Sorry we couldn't get to any of them because we were trying to get through so much information yeah. and explain so, so much. But, well, uh, but we can also talk about this at the end of the dev chat again tomorrow and feel some questions and stuff. I was going to say, join us tomorrow at 10 a.m. for Oz and I's dev chat. Oz will be talking about Mompok. But we'll be able to have a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one with all of you and we'll have like that full yeah. hour to go over that stuff. So until then, everyone, see yeah. you next time. And thanks for subscribing if you did today. We appreciate it. Yeah, and thanks for watching and thanks for joining us. So we'll see you next time, everyone. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.